Did you guys see that? Did you guys see how freaking good the underside of this car looks? That is the one thing on this car that I have been putting off for the longest time and I am so happy with how it turned out. So before we jump into this video, I just wanna say that I made this video for you guys. This is probably not gonna get a lot of views. People probably don't really care about this, but I do because it's a big deal. Everyone cares about what the outside of your car looks like. Everyone cares about your flashy wheels, your nice paint and all this stuff. But really, if you want your car to last a long time, none of that matters if you got rust holes in the bottom of your car. Now, if you guys live in California or somewhere in the States where you guys probably don't get much rust on your cars. All I'm gonna say is, must be nice. Because I live in Alberta, Canada, and all our shit is rusty as hell here. Not as bad as you boys out in Ontario, though. So the point I'm trying to make behind this video is these cars, to me, I see as an investment. Not an investment to make money on, but a personal investment for my happiness and well-being and mental health and all that. I live to build these things. I absolutely love this car. And I hope I never sell this thing. So to make this thing last a long time, I wanted to make sure the underside of this car was completely protected. Because right at the end of last summer, we discovered that this car literally had rust holes in the rear quarter panels at the front where the rockers connect to the rear quarters, which is a very, very common issue on this car. I can pop a little photo up on the screen here of what those rust holes looked like, but we did get them fixed. And I believe I had that in two little videos, I will put a link on the top of the screen to one of the videos that I made showing you guys the rust holes that were on this thing. But we got them fixed now, and since we got them fixed, we were able to completely restore the underside of this car. So the point I wanted to get across in this video before we get into kind of diving into the whole process and talking to Ted and learning a little bit about his business and what he does, I just wanted to let you guys know that this video is not sponsored whatsoever. He did not give me a deal on this whole process. I paid full price for everything. I'm just making this video for you guys because I'm just gonna be honest it's worth the money so now this was my first time doing this I don't usually film in public and I've never really done an interview or anything like that with anybody so I asked Ted a little bit of questions about his business just so that you guys could get as much information as possible and just to make it seem worth it to you guys if you want to get this done on your car I tried to ask him all of the questions that I was wondering going into it so that maybe it kind of helps you guys in your decision-making process a little bit so let's head over over to Sublime Servicing and talk to the man behind the dry ice blasting gun, Ted himself. Well, Daniel, thanks for bringing our car here. So first off, I wanted a better solution for the vehicles that I owned. And I came across dry ice blasting about six years ago and I created the industry in Canada. Nobody else was dry ice blasting cars in the country. Uh, there was a lot of industrial cleaners around, but nobody was doing what I wanted as uh, to do as a living. So I created Sublime Surface about uh, yeah, June 2017. And I think everybody needs this too because after looking at this, this is ridiculous. Like it almost looks like a brand new car underneath in my opinion. I just want the people to know what the benefit of your service is. You don't have to say versus other undercoating companies, but I guess your product versus other products we've seen in the past and rubberized products, oil-based products, stuff like that. Like what is the benefit of going with this product? Kind of the way you explained it to me when I decided to come here for my car. Of course. You'll never catch me uh, outside actually degrading someone else's company. I believe everyone, my food needs to be blessed, so I'm going to speak highly of other places. Uh, what I ask is that you do something, not nothing. So please do something about your car. But I chose the product that I did on purpose. So I found 13 car manufacturers have used wax to do some kind of uh, rust preservation, rust resistance, corrosion resistance underneath the vehicle. There is no rust proofing. I don't like those words together because if you want to actually rust proof your car, you've got two choices. Buy it and don't drive it or ship it into outer space like Elon Musk's uh, Tesla Roadster with that goofy little mannequin in the spacesuit. <laughs> I don't That's think the, I could have said that better myself. That is the only car ever made that is never going to rust because there's no air and no water in space. So the only way to put that on hold, I believe, is a thick wax wax product that won't uh, create more problems than it solves. So the cure isn't worse than the disease and it won't trap water in behind it. You can't get behind the wax. So that is why I chose the product that I did. I take all the other products off. I take oil off, I take asphalt off, I take rubber coatings off of vehicles so that I can apply our system onto it. So that is why I chose the process yeah, that yeah. I did. And I guess that leads into the next point and what I was wondering before I even came here, everyone knows what dry ice is. 
Mm-hmm. But what is dry ice blasting? If you can explain that just so that people understand what you mean when you say, I'm gonna dry ice blast the underside of your car. Mm-hmm. What does it do and how does it actually affect the underside of your car, I guess? Sure, sure. The most annoying thing uh, you find about me is uh, I, I just, I'll, I'll answer your question with an analogy. So imagine you're working in the garage all day long and or working out in the garden or just doing something or going for a jog, whatever you do, and you break a sweat and you want to go out for dinner or go to the theater or just do something that night if you just stand turn on the water and uh, just stand in the shower like a starfish and with just the water turn, raining down on you yeah just turn the water on and just stand <laughs> there like a starfish it doesn't matter if it's like five minutes ten minutes an hour it doesn't matter and then turn the water off you're just gonna be putting cologne over body odor or perfume over body odor it's just a confluence of, of different uh, products so unless you scrub yourself it's not you're not gonna get your body clean what we're doing is we're actually scrubbing the body of the vehicle so so it's a scrubby bubbles. It's uh, it's an abrasive cleaning. It's a, an assertive, nigh-on aggressive cleaning process, but not a destructive cleaning process. But it's better than cleaning with water or pressure washing. So that way we don't leave residue because what the driest does is it actually goes at the speed of sound up against the vehicle. That's something I didn't know. That's kind of cool. Yeah, it's coming out pretty quick. It's coming out at minus 70 degrees and it sublimates. So what it does is it actually strikes stuff and they'll, it'll actually shrink because it's going, it's striking something at minus 70 degrees Celsius. So it'll actually lose adhesion. So it'll actually leave the substrate. So then we can clean the substrate all the way down to the base metal which is what you want us to protect anyways so basically what you're saying is if there's other cheap undercoating or anything like that underneath your car the dry ice is essentially going to pull all of that garbage coating that's not adhered properly to your car and it's going to pull it right off yeah if it loses integrity and that has to do with paint as well you can actually apply that perspective to paint so if the paint has lost integrity if it's if it's old or you're getting like kind of like the blooms of paint where you get little spots and it's not wholesale flaking rust it's just like the little spots of rust typically see it on the outside of vehicles kind of happening from the back pushing out all that will will lose integrity and we blast that off and then we deal with it three other ways and then actually preserve that metal a little bit longer if you guys are doing this i would highly advise get it done as soon as you get your car. Mm -hmm. But for me, I put it off for so long because I couldn't find the right place to go because I couldn't get past the fact of how do you get to the hard reach areas? There's so many areas underneath the car that for me personally, when I I know how big a dry ice blasting gun is, I know how hard it is to, especially if you're using a wire wire wheel or you're trying to DIY this at home and use your own spray paint undercoating underneath the car or something like that. You can't get at some of the hard to reach areas. You can't seal anything inside of your rocker pad and sometimes those rust from the inside out and stuff like that so my biggest concern was how do you get to the hard to reach areas to get as much rust prevention on you as you can on the entire underside of the car I guess there's a few things to unpack there Daniel so one of the things is that what we do is we use a product uh, it handles complex geometry quite well so if we look up at these areas there's different surfaces that require blasting and hitting and it takes time and energy to get not only this space but this space inside as best we can in and around around this hit it from the top side get around your coilovers clean them well enough so that the wax is going to stick adhere perform so that takes time and energy and that's why we charge what we charge we want to make the car as clean as possible better than water ever could what we can do is we can hit all these round areas we can hit all these different mechanical components we do it right we do it as if this is our car it's your car when you drop it off but it's my car until I give it back and that's the mentality that every single car guy needs when they're taking it to a shop they need that shop to have that mentality because that is the biggest thing if you guys are a car guy and you're watching this you already know what it's like like to hand your car off to someone else and put it in their hands, especially Mm -hmm. if you're a DIY type of guy. And to come here and get results, like what I'm seeing here right now is the best feeling, especially leaving with someone else. Like if this comes up on camera, just look at the collars on those coils on how perfect they look with the wax on them. So when you asked about like getting to all the different areas, Mm -hmm. we even took these off as well. So you've got right underneath this bolt here and a couple right here, you actually have a strap that goes underneath is your fuel tank and then actually has a transfer off to the other side. It's, it kind of goes up above your drive shaft and your uh, exhaust. So your fuel tank is actually both of these panels right here. So these were off 
so that way we can hit the fuel tank. Yes, they're plastic, but the thing is they're held together, they're held up to the body by steel straps. And if you've ever seen a uh, Forerunner. There's one getting done right over there. So come here. So right here, these are actually new. So these will be waxed. So this is new because the old one was likely bad. So this one, we're doing what we can to keep it on yeah, the road. Yeah, not gonna lie, I've seen a lot worse than that, but it's starting and it only gets worse from there is exactly. the problem. Nobody wakes up in the morning and discovers that rust just got better overnight. It's not gonna happen. You're not gonna come out to your vehicle in the morning and go, holy shit, the, the rust went away. It doesn't happen. It only gets worse. It only has one pass. So what we're doing is we're actually changing the trajectory of the deterioration of your car. So every time we touch it, we're just flattening out the curve and making sure that the vehicles that you love, the vehicle that you own, just stays on the road longer with the best process, the best product that won't do any damage to your vehicle and won't do any damage to the electrical components. We're safe on electrical, we're safe on the plastic, we're safe on the metal, on the drivetrain, on the suspension. We're safe underneath your vehicle. One thing that I love about your guys' service and what you guys did here is you actually go ahead and remove literally everything. They had all of the plastic panels. Like you said, they're plastics. They're gonna restrict that blasting and cleaning. You guys actually go and remove all of the fender liners, all the covers underneath, and you get to all the hard to reach areas. We've got two paths. These are non-negotiable. So underneath we've got splash shields, if you come with me. So this engine splash shield right here, these are these items and the ones that actually cover the fuel tanks, those are non-negotiable because there's just so much metal behind them. There's so much more car behind those skid, skid plates, whatever you want to call them. So those are kind of a non-negotiable thing. This, the wheel well liners, wheels off, wheel well liners off, that is always kind of a discussion. So we do what I call undressing the vehicle. So we undress it so that way we can get to do more of the metal that you're not going to be able to uh, wash and evacuate dirt from or clean up or only discover that rust has actually taken place once it's far too late. So we want to deal with that, get rid of the dirt or just protect it as soon as possible. The soonest we've ever seen a car is with 13 kilometers on it. That's when you want to do it. You want to hit all these areas before it even sees the road. Like I wish that the original owner of this car would have done this because I bought this car at 140,000 kilometers. It's got 210,000 on it now. And just from this service, look at how good this thing looks underneath with this lighting. All the aluminum shields, the diff mount, like cross brace there, any of the aluminum components under here that you, we didn't hit with any black paint, you can just see the gold wax that's applied to them. And it's, this is this underside of this car literally looks like a Wiz Khalifa song. And that's a good point. So black and yellow, black and yellow. The point is with the yellow, it really stands out on the aluminum components and stainless steel, but the brace is held to the diff with what, Dan? Oh, with uh, two little studs. With steel. So it still makes sense to hit these items. So yeah. That you don't have material loss and you don't have degradation I agree. on everything underneath the vehicle. So we hit everything but the brake rotors and the exhaust. It's we. It's like Frank's hot sauce, man. I don't want to swear on your channel again. But <laughs> we put that shit on. On everything. everything everything i like it so now that we got this all done my next step here is going to pay for it because honestly this to me is 100 worth the money you guys do a great job so just for this job right here what we did on the underside of this car absolutely everything from start to finish him taking the car ripping all the panels off dry ice blasting it coating it waxing it the time of everything drying the entire process even down to him reassembling everything washing the car you taking the car home it is $1,300 and that is in Canadian. I'm being 100% honest with you guys, super transparent, just so you guys know what to expect for something like this. And honestly, in my opinion, that's a good deal. I thought that getting the underside of my car to look like this, if I were to do this myself, this would take weeks, if not months, for me to get this quality of work out of it. And I'd be under the car with a wire wheel and getting steel shot in my face and rust and all that stuff. And you guys know I'm a DIY guy, but this guy just did all the dirty work for me, which is awesome. Like. There it is. This is one job. This is the only thing that I have not done to my car. I do everything myself. I don't let people touch my car. I will be honest thank with you. you. You're the first person I've let touch this car. Thank you very much. Jeff. So thank you very much. And you guys did a great job. So now let's go pay for this because I think it was hundred percent worth it. Thanks. Daniel. Thank you so much, man. I appreciate it. Thanks dude.